poor gut health connected to severe blank new research shows. And uh, long story short, you can go into this microbiology article. But long story short, they actually show a picture too. Let me see if I can get to that picture. Yeah, here we go. That was the picture. I think we I think we already showed this picture, but forgive me. And people listening on audio, basically we're just showing that uh, viral particles with a leaky gut are going to be able to get into the circulation and that's going to increase your inflammatory response. So the real goal of today is making sure that your gut is in good shape because therefore you're not going to have leakage into your circulation. You're going to fare far, far better if you have that healthy gut barrier. So that was the really kind of the spark notes of that, but that's like a 19 page paper that you can dive into. And many people I think have thought of leaky gut as kind of a trendy topic that only people like you and I talk about, but this is finally actually getting into the mainstream. So I hope gastroenterologists are going to realize the importance of addressing the gut. And I hope they actually start taking it more seriously right now. It's just antibiotics. And that's really the only thing that gastroenterologists do for, for gut, right? I mean, steroids maybe, and um, immune modulating drugs in the case of like ulcerative colitis and Crohn's. But beyond that, there's not really much leaky gut conversation going on. No, there's not. And again, really leaky gut's an effect, right? Or we'll call it gut permeability, right? If you go on PubMed, leaky gut's like a slang. If you want to really find it, you want to look at, you know, gastrointestinal permeability, right? These are going to be the big things. It's the tight junctions, the epithelial cells in the small intestine. They start to come apart like my fingers here interlocked, like I'm saying a prayer, they come apart. And then you can see lipopolysaccharides, undigested food particulate can slip out. So this is um this is part of the major major mechanism. Now with gut permeability, it's an effect, not a cause. So I always tell patients, we don't go in and treat leaky gut. We treat the corresponding vectors of inflammation that drive gut permeability. So that could be food allergens, that could be immune stressors like virus, parasites, small intestinal bacterial overgrowth, general dysbiosis, poor digestion antibiotic exposure, creating rebound overgrowth, fungal overgrowth, you know, just poor digestion, lots of stress, increased sympathetic tone and adrenal stress that's shutting down the digestive system and making gut permeability more probable. So these are the big vectors. So we always want to draw a line. What's the root cause? What's the effect? And, and gut permeability is going to be effect, not necessarily a cause. Yeah, I've seen a lot of even advertisements now on social media for all these leaky gut healing formulas and that kind of stuff. And it's always has the word heal involved, but you could take as much glutamine and whatever else you want. You could go into elemental diets and all of that. It's not going to get rid of these big root causes. And certainly for me, I tried some gut support, but ultimately it was resolving my parasite infections. That was the most important thing for me. And so you can test for this. This is not this is not an uncommon situation. You and I personally and clinically see parasites every single week. So when you hear this idea of like, oh, it's a third world country problem, you haven't traveled to Mexico or anything like that, that's just crap. I see it all the time and I had them and I was not out of the country and I had multiple parasite infections. And then that affects your bowel flow.